welcome to today's topic ascaris lumbricoides Ascaris lumbricoides is commonly known as the roundworm or the giant roundworm belonging to the phylum Nematoda. This is the most common parasitic worm in humans. Ascaris was observed and described from very ancient times, often confused with earthworms. In specific name, lumbricoides is derived from its resemblance with the earthworm. Lumbricus meaning earthworm in Latin. Distribution of Ascaris lumbricoides. This is the most common of the human helminths as this described worldwide. The incidence may be as high as 80 to 100 percent in rural areas with poor sanitation. Habitat. The adult worm reside in the small intestine. Majorly 85% in the jejunum and 15% in the ileum. Ascaris lumbricoides is the largest nematode parasite in the human intestine. Let's talk about the morphology of adult worm, that is the male and the female as well as the eggs, the both fertilized and the unfertilized eggs. Adult worms are large cylindrical worms with tapering ends with the anterior end being more pointed than the posteriors. They are pale pink or flesh colored when freshly passed in stools but become white when exposed to the environment or the surrounding or outside the body. The mouth at the anterior end has three finely toothed lips, one dorsal and two ventrolateral. The male worm is little smaller short, that is shorter than the female worm. It measures 15 to 30 centimeter in length and the thickness of 2 to 4 millimeter. The posterior end is curved ventrally to form a hook and carries two copulatory spicules. The female worm is larger than the male measuring 20 to 40 centimeter in length with a thickness of 3 to 6 millimeter. The posterior extremity is straight and conical. The vulva is situated near the junction of the anterior and the middle thirds of the body. A single worm lays up to 2 lakh eggs per day. The eggs are passed in the feces. Eggs laid by the female worms are of two types. One is fertilized and the other is unfertilized eggs. The fertilized eggs are laid by the females, inseminated by males by mating. They are embryonated and develop into infective eggs. The unfertilized eggs are laid by uninseminated females. They are non-embryonated and are non-infective. Eggs produced by the Ascaris lumbricoides are bile stained eggs. Other parasites that produce bile stained eggs are the Tinea solium and the Tinea saginata and many others. A clear differentiation between the unfertilized and the fertilized egg. Unfertilized egg is elliptical in shape narrower and longer, has a thin shell with irregular coating of albumin. It contains small atrophied ovum with a mass of disorganized, highly refractile granules of various size. Unfertilized eggs do not float in salt water. While the fertilized eggs are round and oval in shape, they are bile stained, golden yellow in color, surrounded by a thick smooth translucent shell with an outer coarsely mammulated albuminous coat, a thick transparent middle layer and an inner lipodal vitellin membrane. Some eggs are found in the feces without the outer mammulated coat. These are known as the decorticated eggs. 
in the middle of the egg is a large unsegmented ovum containing a mass of coarse lecithin granules fertilized eggs float in the saturated solution of common salt life cycle of ascaris involves only one host the natural host being man there is no other intermediate host the infective form of ascaris lumbricoides is the embryonated eggs produced by the females by mating with the male worm mode of transmission of ascaris infection occurs when the egg containing the infective rebitiform larva is swallowed a frequent mode of transmission is through fresh vegetables grown in fields manured with human feces the night soil infection may be also transmitted through contaminated drinking water children playing in mud can transmit x to their mouth through dirty fingers the geophage where soil contamination is heavy due to indiscriminate defecation the eggs can sometimes get airborne along with windswept dust that are inhaled the inhaled eggs are swallowed development in the soil the fertilized eggs passed in the feces is not immediately infective it has to undergo a period of incubation in the soil before acquiring the infectivity the eggs are resistant to adverse conditions and can survive for several years the development usually takes from 10 to 40 days during which time the embryo molts twice and becomes the infective rebitiform larva coiled up within the egg followed by the development in soil the development in man when the swallowed eggs reach the duodenum the larva hatch out the rebitiform larva is about 250 micron in length 14 micron in diameter which is actively motile the adult worm has a life span of 12 to 20 months a flow chart clearly stating the development in man the rebitiform larva penetrates the intestinal mucosa which then enters the portal vessels then carried to the liver they are then passed they then pass via the hepatic vein to the inferior vena cava entering the right side of the heart further entering the lungs in about 4 days they grow and molt twice in about 10 to 15 days the larva pierces the lung capillaries and reach the alveoli they crawl up the respiratory passage to the throat and are swallowed the larva molt and develop into adults in the upper part of the small intestine they become sexually mature in about 6 to 12 weeks the gravid females start laying eggs to repeat the cycle pathogenicity and clinical features disease caused by ascaris lumbricoides is called as ascariasis clinical manifestations in ascariasis can be caused either by the migrating larva or by the adult worm itself symptoms due to the migrating larva the pathogenic effects of larval migration are due to allergic reaction and not the presence of the larva as such initial exposure to the larva is usually asymptomatic when reinfection occurs subsequently there may be intense cellular reaction to the migrating larva in the lungs with infiltration of eosinophils macrophages and epithelioid cells this ascaris pneumonia is characterized by low grade fever dry cough 
asthmatic wheezing atricaria eosinophilia and the mortal lung infection in the chest radiograph the sputum is often blood tinge and may contain carcot laden crystals the larva may be found in the sputum but are more seen in gastric washings this condition is called as the loeffler syndrome the symptoms due to the adult worm clinical manifestations due to adult worm vary from asymptomatic infection to severe or even fatal consequences asymptomatic infections are generally seen in mild cases the pathological effects when present are caused by the spoliative action the toxic action the mechanical and the wandering effects by the adult worm the spoliative or the nutritional effects are usually seen when the worm burden is heavy the worms may be present in enormous numbers in small children occupying a large part of the intestinal tract this interferes with the proper digestion and absorption of food they contribute to the pem pem the protein energy malnutrition and vitamin a deficiency patients have loss of appetite abnormalities of the genital mucosa are often present including the broadening and the shortening of the villi elongation of crypts and round cell infiltration of the lamina propria these changes are reversed when the worms are eliminated toxic effects are due to hypersensitivity to the worm antigens it is manifested as fever atricaria angioneuritic edema wheezing and conjunctivitis it is more often seen in persons who come in contact with the worm occupationally as in laboratory technicians and abata workers than in children having intestinal infestations mechanical effects are the most important manifestations of ascariasis due to masses of worms causing luminal occlusion or even a single worm infiltrating into a vital area cause these mechanical effects the adult worms live in the upper part of the small intestine where they maintain their position due to the muscle tone spanning the lumen they may stimulate reflex peristalsis causing recurrent and often severe colic pain in the abdomen the worms may be clumped together into masses filling the lumen leading to valvulus in intersusception or intestinal obstruction and intestinal perforations topic ascariasis or the wanderlust ascariasis the worms are restless wanderers they tend to probe and insinuate themselves into any aperture they find on the way the wandering is enhanced when the host is ill with a temperature above 39 degrees celsius the male worm is more responsible to the illness than the female the worm may wander up and down along the gut enter the opening of the biliary or pancreatic duct causing acute biliary obstruction or pancreatitis they may enter the liver parenchyma where they may lead to liver abscess they go up to the esophagus and come out through the nose or mouth it may crawl through the trachea and the lungs causing respiratory obstruction or the lung abscess they may migrate downwards the worm may cause obstructive appendicitis leading to peritonitis when it perforates the intestine generally at weak spots such as the typhoid or the tubercular ulcers or even through the suture lines they may further reach the kidneys also we'll be seeing about the laboratory diagnosis the detection of the parasites the various serological test 
and the blood examination for Ascariasis lumbricoides. Detection of the parasite. Adult worm can be detected in the stool or sputum of the patient by naked eye. Barium meal may reveal the presence of adult worm in the small intestine. A plain abdominal phlegm may reveal masses of worms in gasful loops of bowel in patients with intestinal obstruction. Larva can be identified in the early stages of infection when migrating larva cause Loeffler syndrome. The diagnosis may be made by demonstrating the larva in the sputum or more often in gastric washings. Presence of carcat laden crystals in sputum and an attendant eosinophilia support the diagnosis. At this stage, no eggs are seen in the feces. Chest X-ray may show patchy pulmonary infiltrates. Detection of eggs. Definitive diagnosis of ascariasis is made by demonstration of eggs in the feces. The eggs can be readily seen by microscopic examination of a saline emulsion of feces. Both fertilized and unfertilized eggs are usually present. Occasionally, only one type is seen. Fertilized eggs may sometimes appear decorticated, that is the outer membrane may sometimes be absent. The unfertilized eggs are not detectable by salt flotation. Serological test. Ascaris antibody can be detected by indirect hemagglutination, indirect fluorescent antibody test, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay ELISA, Serodiagnosis is helpful in extra-intestinal ascariasis like the Loeffler syndrome. Blood examination. Complete blood count may show eosinophilia in early stage of invasion. Treatment of ascariasis. Pyrantel pamate 1 mg, alpendazole 400 mg once Mebendazole 100 mg twice daily for 3 days or 500 mg once or ivermethacin 150 to 200 mg per kg once. These medications are contraindicated in pregnancy. Pyrantel pamate is safe in pregnancy. Partial intestinal obstruction should be managed with nasogastric suction intravenous fluid administration and installation of piperazine through the nasogastric tube. Complete obstruction requires immediate surgical intervention. Prophylaxis. Ascariasis can be eliminated by preventing fecal contamination of soil. Treatment of vegetables and other crops with water containing iodine 200 parts per million for 15 minutes kills the eggs and larva of Ascaris and other helminths. Avoid eating raw vegetables and fruits. Improvement of personal hygiene. Treatment of infected persons, especially the children. To conclude, cleanliness is next to godliness. Cleanliness begins with the purity of our mind, thoughts and heart. Thank you.